grabbed attention in an enormous way. And uh, as we know, that uh, energy follows intention. So there is, uh, again, there's a lot of speculation and uh, comment about what that, uh, that energy grab might be about or might lead to. And uh, so it might be as well just to, to step back and pause for a moment and consider some of the, uh, the wider possibilities of what you might be exposed to as you, uh, if you're one of those people who is going to be uh, spectating, whether from a distance or in person, uh, you know, on your television or listening to it on the radio or whatever, um, that to know that you are being exposed to a lot more than just simply the the athletics or the sport or the the ceremonies that uh, both in the in the setting in in the pageantry in the uh, the opening ceremony a lot of speculation about the opening ceremony tomorrow that there's uh, there's another there maybe another agenda being rolled out here that uh, perhaps might be good to know about so I've taken the unusual step. It's, it's kind of hard at short notice to get in touch with some of the people who are coming up with these ideas and this information. So I've taken the unusual step of actually, I'm going to just uh, stick the microphone over a, uh, a download of a recording from another radio show and uh, just hope that that's okay with everybody and let you listen to a few excerpts from it. So the first one is... Uh, an interview with a man called Rick Clay who is now deceased, a young man I think he was uh, putting this information together a few years ago and it's uh, kind of proving to be quite prophetic so here we go It's been banded around the internet quite a bit but if you shuffle the Olympics 2012 logo around you can spell the word Zion but obviously Zion stands for the term New Jerusalem. We haven't seen the Ian Crane speech and everything. I had an urge to start my own research into this. I wanted to find out if what was saying could be proven kind of thing. First thing that brought to my mind was the poem by William Blake. And uh, William Blake wrote a poem in the 18th century called Jerusalem. And uh, there's a paragraph, uh, the, the final final like few words in that poem says I will not cease from mental flight nor shall my sword sleep in my hand till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. So basically William Blake was a known 18th century esotericist with connections to the Freemasons. But essentially in that poem we'd got an acknowledgement from a guy connected with this esoteric research that they were intent on building Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. We're thinking like when we talk about the Olympics 2012 we're talking about something that's been planned for hundreds of years and there's a lot of proof that I've dug up that can show that. There's a video released by the Olympic Committee and this, uh, this was a stadium design video and it was this crazy CGI I don't know what you want to call it, action film on how they're going to build the Olympic 2012 stadium. Given what Ian had spoke about with aliens and Independence Day style spaceships and stuff, this has got it all in it. Basically, within 40 seconds of this video, there's four chimneys that stand like an 11-11, but then it moves into the most significant symbology you could ever see with, like, you know, an Independence Day style mothership for a roof, little UFOs flying all around the London <laughs> Eye, and then it ends up robotic streetwalkers in the middle of London stomping around the place towards the Olympic Stadium. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty weird to watch it. Does this mean that there is a significant event looming for the Olympics? 1972 Olympics in Munich. Funnily enough, these were the, very, the world's first stage for global terrorism. You know, the very first global, like, you know, declared as global terrorism. The first act was in the 1972 Munich Olympic. And on these Olympics, there were 11 Israelis killed, so we've got the number 11 there, and they were killed by a group called Black September, which is obviously the ninth month, so it's obviously an 11 you've got there. And that particular Olympics um, were host to 121 countries, which is 11 times 11. So you've got a significant event there with the first like, global stage for terrorism, as it is. I've started thinking, well, you know, the year 1984, there's obviously Olympics in that year. And um, it's synonymous with the George Orwell book of Big Brother and, you know, a completely, you know, oppressive state, if you like, a New World Order kind of background. And um, I've heard... I've, I've, briefly remembered hearing things about a, a closing ceremony in the 1984 Olympics and uh, did some rooting around on the internet and obviously came across a video in the 1984 Olympics which were held in Los Angeles 
they closed the ceremony and the audience didn't even expect this because most of the audience expect like thought it was real at the time it closed with a ufo flying over the olympic stadium kind of communicating with the audience in a close encounters of a you know the third kind style right. the ufo eventually like closes down and lands in the center of the stadium at which point there's a load of smoke and then this alien gets out and tells the audience that he likes what he sees there so you get this really strange thing out of the middle of nowhere no one was expecting it and i don't know how you'd ever connect olympics with this ufo event in the first place obviously 1984 symbolic year ufo landed creatures of a day man is merely a shadow but when god given glory comes upon him in victory a bright light shines upon us and our light is swiss when the end comes, the loss of flame brings darkness. But his glory is bright forever. It's been created. Well, the company who created that logo was a company called Wolf Hollins. It's a brand agency. And uh, this brand agency was set up by a chap called Wally Hollins. And this, this man was responsible for branding corporate Europe. So basically, you know, GE Capital, all these logos that have kind of sunk into the subconscious of sorts, these are all, like, created by this man called Wally Hollins, uh, who created the 2012 logo as well. And it turns out his dad was a Freemason. So the chances are that, you know, he, there's an interview online where he references his dad trying to get him to be a Freemason. He never actually says whether he is or not. Chances are, it's in the family. And, you know, there's these messages in the logos that this man's produced. It's a Freemasonic branding, you know, company for corporate Europe. At this point, you know, you've got this, um, you've got this connection to Freemasonry with the logo and stuff, and it moves much higher than Freemasonry. That's just like the, um, the outside protection for this stuff. I basically loaded up, um, you know, Google Earth, wanted to have a look at the... Uh, I wanted to look at the London site from the air. I wanted to see, you know, what it is that's uh, so special about this place. And, um, you know, for it just so happened that the particular site in Stratford was the only last bit of wasteland that was, um, you know, that was left vacant in London. It was the one last place that they could do things um, for something like the Olympics. And so, you know, it's quite lucky that they, they had it in the first place. And what I noticed was I started looking at the actual street plan of this place. And um, you've got a number of roads that circle the site. And the first road is a road called the East Cross Route, which is a reference to the Eastern Cross. Um, you know, the Eastern Cross is, is an Orthodox cross, and it's a modified version of the...